Thank you, Nitin. To kick off to kickstart our day, I'd like to welcome Sarah Wells, uh, executive editor for Bloomberg News, who will be engaging with a fireside chat with Dr. Siri. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, Kunseri, I would like to come back to some of the points that you made in your opening remarks, but I think first we should tackle the topic of returns. We have an audience here of, of asset owners and asset managers who are operating in a challenging global environment. To those who might be concerned about the impact of sustainable investing on returns, what would you say to them? I think the performance that has been expressed through our pilot project and also internationally uh, speaks for itself that in long term, and I have to stress the long term nature of ESG investment, has shown that every fund that has been established internationally, regionally, and here in Thailand, the pilot um, ESG portfolio, um, ESG focus portfolio rather, that we set up in 2018 beats um, the normal equity fund. Uh, and is there, are there any plans to boost the allocation to that fund? Um, we are, it's under discussion because we need to uh, conclude within one year, uh, but the 10 month uh, performance has shown a great promise. Uh, and let's talk a little more deeply about the components of ESG from a Thai perspective. So what elements of the E, the S and the G are most relevant here? Uh, where have you seen the most progress uh, and where are there Thailand specific challenges? I think if you start with the, the last pillar, the G, um, this is of probably the least concern at the moment because it has been um, most ingrained in our system. The Stock Exchange for Thailand, for example, has stressed about governance, has issued a number of uh, guidelines on CG corporate governance to listed companies. We have CG scorecard and the ESG, uh, the GPF itself invested in alignment with what the, the SET has, has um, come up with. But the most concerning uh, two pillars are the first two, the E and the S. How can we strengthen the environment? How can we develop um, the environmental indicators and social indicators underneath which are plenty, plethora of sub-indicators that we need to be mindful of, not just in Thailand, but also across the region. Since our investors are not only investing in Thailand, but also across the region and globally. And can you give us any examples in the E and the S that well, you're focused on? Um, the, the, as you know, we are in alignment with 2030 agenda. So life on land, life below water um, are to be incorporated and integrated. Um, we need to identify what are our priorities in Thailand. We can see clearly that um, the impact of um, large-scale investment projects um, that have on um, the cross-border in people in our country and people across ASEAN uh, needs to be um, absorbed and internalized. On the S, we have a number of progress to be reported on human rights issue. Um, we have Thailand um, has ratified a number of labor rights treaties, but it's just a start. We need to go more. We need to do more. And social issues concern not just with labor issue. It concerns a number of other issues, related issues. Labor rights, um, workers' rights, uh, women's rights, which are also part of the whole um, human rights um, um, world. Um, and with GPF being on the forefront of sustainable investing here, uh, what lessons have you learned so far? You know, this, we're, we're hoping this is an open dialogue. Obviously, lots of things have gone right, but is there anything you would do differently or you would advise others to do differently going forward? Um, I think that the experience that we have is that um, divestment policy or disengagement has to be more nuanced. There at one point in time, when we found out um, last year an incident where um, there was a, a case of insider trading uh, of, one, of one big company in which we invested, um, we in decided to pull off instantly and we lost leverage to be an active shareholder. 
So going forward and based on that experience, we need to be more nuanced with divestment policy, with disengagement policy. We need to be active shareholder using our leverage in a more nuanced approach on companies. Um, but I have to, to tell you that every year at every, um, at every um, shareholders meeting, we at GPF, we vote against companies that you know, go beyond in terms of um, the um, uh, directors taking up position for more than nine years, for example. That is our uh, you know, constant experience, but we need to be more nuanced when it comes to disintegration or divestment. Do you think that the development of sustainable investing practices should be regulator-led or investor-led, and why? Well, um, two prongs. Um, at the moment, GPF has, as I said, a collaborative platform with 32 securities firms. I think this is a good way forward. Um, it is um, semi-regulated already because you have platform like the e uh, SET showcasing good companies, the ESG-led um, company under its um, Thailand Sustainable um, Index. And you, we have also a number of companies aligned with DJSI. Uh, and to do good is to show good results and to be recognized. Um, but voluntarily, we would like to see more and more people, more and more firms joining this collaborative platform so that we can show to the regulator that there is no need for you know, hardline regulation. Um, if, if it can be done voluntarily, if it can showcase to the people that ESG can be done uh, successfully through voluntary initiative. And you've mentioned quite a lot of activities that the stock exchange is involved in in this area. Um, is there anything on the agenda that when that's that's coming up that we yeah we haven't discussed yet? Um, I think two two points. Um, deepening of ESG is one thing, but to broaden the understanding that ESG is a matter of principle is another thing, and this is hard to do. It's not just, you know, we, we have this forum today and, and things will change instantly. Um, at the Stock Exchange of Thailand, we have Center for ESG, and I think we have a colleague from the SET who will uh, elaborate on this. But we need also to enlist um, those who seek to list in the Stock Exchange to understand fully what it means by ESG. And because the lens through which investors are looking at them before investing are through ESG. So if their, their performance is in alignment, that will certainly help both parties to, to, be, to be aligned. Can you talk a little about the topic of ESG diplomacy? Um, I, and this is my own um, coinage. I, I sit on board the, um, the CG uh, committee of the SET and the SET itself is um, at the forefront of the continental ASEAN when it comes to creating platform among exchanges of countries like Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Myanmar, and to a certain extent, Malaysia. We have the collaboration platform. So we need ESG is the language, is a, is a focal um, point through which we can mainstream common understanding. So why don't we use and since our companies are operating in these, com in these countries anyway, so they need to make sure that we are exporting good practices that are already in place in Thailand when you invest abroad. So this is about ESG diplomacy, to, to make sure that um, the stock exchanges of our neighboring countries are on the same wavelength with the stock exchange of Thailand. This is what I mean by ESG diplomacy. And both for, for Thailand and for the region, um, what, what lessons can we learn from Europe and the, and the United States where obviously, well particularly Europe, um, ESG has been a focus for a longer time period? Um, well, I won't go into, uh, this is a sensitive issue when, when um, the, the, U the US government um, excluded some GSP from our um, list of goods to be exported to the US. I think we need to discuss also um, internally whether or not we should go um, the measure that has been suggested by the U.S. government when it cuts the GSP is to create, to allow 
migrant workers to create union in Thailand. This has been un under discussion for years. Um, we have made progress on forced labor, but on migrant workers, I think we need to collaborate more and more, not just in Thailand, but also create the same understanding with ASEAN. It's not going to be easy, but we need to do that. And is there anything that you see in Europe that you think we should bring over here? Oh, in Europe, um, I, I have alluded to the fact that yesterday our cabinet adopted the, the first national action plan on business and human rights. And this is voluntary. In Europe, in Australia, the UK and France more specifically, they have issued specific legally binding standards on reporting. For example, in your supply chain, if you have more than a certain amount of threshold, you need to report whether you have um, you know, modern form of slavery. I think we need to learn from that lesson, being exporters um, in our own country to these destinations. How can we align undertaking voluntary effort at our, on our side? I have discussed with a number of exporters who are being enforced these standards already. For example, if you are exporting um, snacks to Europe, you need to, to be certified that the palm oil that you use for your snacks is in, is in accordance with the sustainable standard for palm oil harvesting. So it's a, it, we are in the dynamic world. On one hand, we have you know, legally binding um, and standards setting. On the other side, we are developing voluntary guidelines. I think it's, 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 um, we, we're going to see dynamism occurring quickly in this, in this region and in Thailand as well. Excellent. So in terms of near-term changes ahead, uh, as my colleague Nitin said, we hope that this is an action-oriented day. Uh, if you think about what sustainable investing will look like in Thailand in 12 months' time, uh, what does it look like? What do you hope to, to see change? Um, expansion of securities firms joining the, the, the GPF. And I think the, the other day I mentioned this to um, Provident Fund uh, managers to provident fund members of state enterprises that they have the leverage to play. The easiest thing they can do with that leverage is to integrate ESG basically when they choose their fund managers. So the GPF already uh, has integrated ESG as a criterion when it selects fund managers already. So if state enterprise also lead the way, walk the talk, and also are in alignment with GPF when they select um, their own fund managers. This would help. Secondly, I think that over in the 12 month period, and I hope today we'll also foster this kind of development of more robust guideline. At the moment, we lack from the SEC, the uh, Securities Exchange Commission side that has issued the regulation for green bond. What we lack at the moment is standardized reporting. So, Data cannot be you know, mined um, automatically from um, unstandardized data. That's, that's, that's logic. So what we need to do over today and over the, the next 12 month time is to come up with sort of suggestion. The SEC already are in dis is in discussion with the Stock Exchange of Thailand on the disclosure form of listed companies, we are going to have a more standardized version so that we can integrate ESG in a more robust way. So this is what I see in the next um, 12 months. And how about over a longer time span, say five years? Do you think there'll be a, a step change from where we are now? Um, I, I, I think that um, we see Thailand as a stepping stone for, as a regional player so if Thailand is doing something, um, you know, we are being watched by the likes of Malaysia and Indonesia. So we need to be in discussion with them as well on how we can go hand in hand, join hand in hand together, because our investors are their investors. And, and many of their investors are investing in Thailand. Our interests are in trend. Uh, so we need to be in alignment with one another. Okay, well, we've got time for some brief last words. Uh, if there's anything that you would like the audience to, some key takeaways uh, for today, what would, what would you focus on? Um, I think the, when we, when we initiated 
ESG discussion at the GPF, the first thing we need to convince is not other people but ourselves. That ESG is the right thing to do, is the matter of principle. It has taken that not just of one month, it has taken us some few years. When I sit on board the Corporate Governance Committee, the first thing that came to us is whether or not we should issue recommendation for ESG. We did it in instantly. But how to internalize, ask people in the investment committee to be convinced equally. That is not easy. When we say ESG focus portfolio, we chose the word carefully. Because if you say that this is ESG portfolio, people will ask, what about the rest of your portfolio? So then we say, this is a pilot project. So we, we, we coin it. We say, it, this is ESG focused to differentiate between ESG and not so ESG focused. We are not using the term non-ESG. So, so the nuance is there. So you can notice that um, we have come sort of a long way already. But, um, and this is the lesson. I, I'm sure that um, among our peers here, the 32 colleagues that have signed the, the agreement, they understand full well what, what it entails when it comes to ESG integration and embedment. Um, what I like to tell you is that unless we do something, last year you may recall when we have the PM 2.5 incident in Bangkok, the Stock Exchange of Thailand organized the role, the forum on the role of financial institutions to combat PM 2.5, people did not see relevance, how we can be relevant, how we, can, how we, can, how we are duty bound to combat climate change. ESG is the lens through which our duty is reflected and must be monitored as well. So it is on us. Right now we are talking about the E, the S and the G. Um, they are all overlap, combined and complement one another. So when we talk about positive lists on one hand through the ESG focused portfolio, we have good performance to tell you uh, we are going to release the data. On the other hand, the negative list, it has not been easy and we are, have come up with our 32 colleagues as well on the rough um, criteria to work together. For example, we are going to say that we are going to have an engagement with those we are going to enlist on the negative list excluding from our investment universe. We are going to engage the companies, the target companies, unless they do something within the given time span, say a week. We are going to stop our investment. We, are not, no, we will not increase our investment, nor will we divest automatically. We will use our leverage. So I think the experience that we have, and again, we are not the number one in terms of institutional fund. Our social security fund, friend, um, are in line with us as well. So together already, and we are part of the public side. On the private side, they need, when, we, when you talk about fiduciary duty, ESG is ingrained, ESG is part and parcel of that particular fiduciary duty. I think that is the line that I want to, as a take home message. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Kunseri. That's very Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Siri. Thank you, Sarah.